Hi, hey guys, this is the Nerd Variety Podcast, and uh, I'm here with Hannah. Hello. And Josh. Hey, what's up? And uh, I'm Hunter. So, uh, Josh, you just went to Atlanta Comic Con this past weekend. Yes, yes, I did. I went with some friends. Uh, We took a nice little drive up there to Atlanta, uh, got in there, and it was very, it was very chill uh, con. Uh, Atlanta Comic Con, this is only its second year, so I think they're still getting their bearings, kind of figure out. They're not quite up there with Dragon Con. They might be slightly, they might be, they're not be, they're probably a little, they're probably under Dragon Con too, Uh, but it was really relaxing. Uh, con. It was a lot of people there on Saturday, but Friday, Friday and Sunday were really uh, kind of was there. It was a little sparse, but it made it easy to get to the people that you wanted to see and you know get a good look around the place. Um, we immediately went in there and got to see uh, uh, Sean Schimmel, who voices uh, Goku from Dragon Ball, yeah, yeah. Um, and then Steve Dows, who voices Master Chief from Halo, which yeah. and that was. Those are amazing experiences. Sounds like it. Those are both really great voice actors. I mean, I I feel like I heard the, that uh, Sean Schimmel's definitely not been the only one voicing Goku in English. Has he been? I feel like there's been a variety of them. As far as I know, uh, I'm not not as huge of a Dragon Ball Z fan as you know others, but you know, I, I've. Of, uh, from what I've watched in the show, that he's been, he's done the the voice. He's he's got the bigger biggest name for it. Oh, okay. Uh, especially for you know, as doing the American voice voiceover. Yeah, because I remember reading something about uh, there's like a Chinese or Japanese uh, woman that does uh, all of Goku's voices the entire time of uh, Goku's run in the anime in the Japanese version. Uh, but I think I also had heard that there have been a variety of different voice actors, male voice actors for Goku in the English version. No, so far only one that no was was Sean, uh, oh. and of course uh, I can't remember her name, but the Japanese actress that voice has voiced Goku since uh, the I think the end of probably Dragon since Ball. Dragon Ball. Yeah, yeah, that would be my guess. But okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, did you meet anybody else besides those two? That day we met. Uh, I think just yet, just, just uh, I got uh, Sean to sign my uh, Goku uh, Z Fighters jacket, um, and then I got nice. uh, uh, Steve Dallas to sign my Halo, my original Halo Three for Xbox. So my first, my first owned Halo game. So nice. that was a really nice. Well, it's gonna be a nice little keepsake for me. Just kind of look at and just say. Yes, this is this is awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, did you have the did you have the jacket beforehand, or did you buy it there? I got it for as a Christmas gift uh, last year. Nice. So it was just like, well, I need something Dragon Ball to for him to sign, and it's like, well, I have a jacket here that I don't wear all the time, but I do wear sometimes, and you know, I think it look, I think it would only improve it by getting signed by Goku himself yeah yeah of course uh, actually i just asked because i remember i was remembering last year when i went to uh, my first dragon con uh there was at least one one shop in the the shop area whatever it was called um that had like these really awesome like leather jackets i think they were leather i and it may not have been real leather but they were really awesome i think i saw like some i think i saw one that was like vegeta's original one you know like his original outfit where he had the scouter and everything yeah yeah his uh uh i guess conquesting saiyan uh yeah. look yeah and i just remember thinking that's really cool if i had money to spend on stuff right now i would love to get this sadly it doesn't look like i'll have money to spend on anything at dragon con this year either but we'll see how that goes yeah the struggle was- of getting what you want at cons hmm do i have the space for this do I have the money for this? Can I find this somewhere else for cheaper? Uh, and is this item exclusive to this here, the con? All things you want, you got to consider before buying that, you know, that giant storm breaker that you want to put on your wall. <laughs> yeah. Well, everyone needs a storm breaker, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, what else you, how else are you going to kill? Uh, Th- uh, Thanos, you know. <laughs> I guess you have to snap your fingers and just hope for the best. 
Just remember yeah. to aim for the head. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Most important thing. Most important thing. When you snap your fingers? Well, just always. Oh, okay. <laughs> aim for his head with your snaps. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Don't want to miss. Yeah. Actually, okay. Little side little little aside here. Um what do either of you know what the hammer or not the hammer, the uh the axe that Kratos used in God of the new God of War is called? I feel like I should be the one to know that since you I should. Played. You should. You played more. Yeah, God and, more and because I made the axe for my cosplay last year and it's in my room, so I'm just wondering, is that Stormbreaker? Because I feel like maybe it's not no no no. I got it. I got it. I came to it on my own. Thank you. Thanks. It's the Leviathan axe. Ooh. Yeah. I Googled well, it. I have well, okay. I, I knew it <laughs> off the top of my head anyway. Right. But that one was that was pretty awesome. Sorry, it's just Stormbreaker kind of made me think of that. Anyways. Cool. Ten point, ten points to do Hunter's memory. Thank you. Thank you. Um wait, what? I said ten points to hunters. No, memory. I know. That was never mind. Otherwise, because I couldn't remember not. what you said. Yeah. Okay. No. Oh my gosh. Anyways. <laughs> yes, Hannah. Nothing. 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 No, I mean, do you, do you have something to add? I feel like you haven't said anything yet. Uh, well, so we were actually just talking before we started recording about um the name nerd variety and where it comes from, and it really is a variety of nerds because I have no idea what you guys are talking about with all this Dragon Ball stuff. I feel like I watched it as a kid, but have not gone back to it since. And so I'm, I like, I'm recognizing some names here and there, but I'm like, I don't. Yeah. Well, to be fair, I'm a different I'm, kind of nerd. To be fair, I'm the only real Dragon Ball nerd here. Maybe it's like <laughs> he's dabbled. You're, you're, a, you're a, um, you're an OG Dragon yeah. Ball, Dragon Ball nerd. I am. I, am. I'm I was a, actually I'm a bit of a late, late bloomer. Yeah, I was a little surprised when I when I knew that about you because you know when we were roommates, uh, I had heard you were seeing you guys watching Dragon Ball Z abridged, and I I just assumed you had seen the actual show first, <laughs> and you know we had discussions where you just like no, I don't really know anything about it except from Dragon Ball Z abridged. Yeah, it was kind of my gateway. I I kind of dabbled a little bit with Z. Uh, when I, after I, you know, I was in college for a couple of years, and then of course I got introduced to uh, a bridge, and a bridge was more like was just just killed killed me with the with the humor, and yeah. uh, but it was also like a good way to look at snippets of the story. At, 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 well, not snippets, really, really a good chunk of the story. Yeah, uh, and then, they cut uh, out a lot of the filler, really. Yeah, yeah, and, and honestly, me, there are definitely parts that they they actually kind of do a lot better you know they keep it more consistent surprisingly right right especially at the end of it kind of fine tunes it at especially at the end of the the uh the cell arc um okay. yeah so yeah that's how i got into it and then i just kind of picked it up from there and watched super um i was able to follow along and then now i'm now i'm like waiting for the next you know series of dragon ball whenever that's done sean said in his um uh, at his panel that he's just kind of waiting for, you know, you know, some, some word from on high. Yeah. Aren't yeah. we all? Yes. So I, I love anime, but I'm just so intimidated, intimidated by things like Dragon Ball that at least to me, because I'm not knowledgeable, it seems like they go on forever. Kind of. And I'm like, Ugh. so I haven't watched like Naruto or I think one piece is really long and I've heard they're really good, but I'm just like, that's so much. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of there with you. Like I've seen Dragon Ball, but like Naruto, I've heard there's a lot of it, mm -hmm. and I think One Piece is like still going. I think. Oh my yeah, gosh. Still going. I don't know, but uh, I know Naruto ended just because I had heard people when I was in college talking about that. I think. Mm -hmm. and I feel like slightly like a hypocrite because I've read the entire fairy tale manga. Ooh, we have a manga reader here. Oh yeah, oh yes. <laughs> um, but it, it's so long. But I'm, I'm like, I read that, but Naruto, uh, I don't know. Well, I mean, talk about like a hypocrite, I guess. Uh, I, I actually have with me right now a uh, Naruto cup. Uh, it's a glass, <laughs> actually, that I've, I've had for a while now. I got it in Loot Crate, and I'm like, mm. oh, I know what that is. I've never seen it, but I know what it is, and it's cool. <laughs> they had yeah. plenty of loot crates there as well. Uh, many were. There were a couple that kind of grabbed my eye, but it's one still one of those things. Like, do I 
you know, yeah. I can I can maybe I can wait. I can maybe maybe, maybe there's the one thing that I I've always wanted from that franchise in there that because I do need you know, you know as a fan now I do need more. I could use more Dragon Ball stuff, but you know, yeah, one of these days. One of these days. I don't know. Loot crate just has kind of pissed me off the last few times I got it. Oh. I don't need to really get into it too much. It's just. <laughs> I, I was trying to, like, help them out. I was trying to get, like, uh, whatever you call it, affiliate or something with them, partner with them, mm. whatever. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, kind of, because I was doing some stuff where I would show off, I would uh, do some unboxings uh, on my stream, and it got ridiculous in their delivery time. Like, a, mm-hmm. a crate would end up showing up finally, like, halfway into the month after it was supposed to come hmm. so i wasn't really ever opening the correct it didn't feel like i was opening the correct month's loot crate this episode not sponsored by loot crate please not yet <laughs> no not, not sponsored <laughs> at least not yet <laughs> no no if if that would happen then i would be much more positive about it <laughs> but, uh, no. they're it, just so not. weird to me because like i've gotten a couple and it really i feel like really kind of makes money on this whole idea of almost like treasure hunting that we have, which is why we love mystery boxes and the like storage wars TV show where it's like, Oh, I opened this storage compartment and found all this weird stuff. But it definitely, I feel like, especially if you're not getting a lot of stuff that you're familiar with, Mm -hmm. it's it's kind of like a instantaneous, like, Oh, look at all this random stuff I got. And then it's kind of like, all right, well, that was, that was fun. Who knows what you're gonna get? Yeah. I mean, yeah. it, the good thing about Loot Crate, though, however, is that you can see kind of before you get it or before you buy it, you can look up like what the theme is gonna be, or they'll they'll mm-hmm. tell you what the theme is gonna be, and what kind of uh, like what franchises or whatever are gonna yeah. be involved. Yeah, mm-hmm. and if they didn't, I totally would never have gotten one. Um, but I, I have gotten a couple, and I've gotten some really fun stuff from them. But I definitely, like, do a lot of looking into what might be in there before I I spring that much money on it, just because of... Yeah, I think I... Expensive. I don't I don't know for sure, but I feel like I've actually gotten some duplicate items. And <gasps> Gasp. Like, one or two. So not a lot, but I, <laughs> I feel like that had happened before, and I was just like, oh. Now, I've spent a good bit of money on... Uh, what is it that's like their their vault or something so all these like random items that they have left over from a crate they sell it yeah. d- discounted yeah and I've i got like that. a really cool like triforce scarf and a random like princess bride set of playing cards and just like really awesome. random nonsense but cheap and i know what it is and i think that that's what i've been using it for a lot yeah right. yeah that sounds awesome. awesome like a lot of booths at the cons or things like uh, especially one booth uh, had a lot of just little nitpick, little little things from, from different franchises, but mm-hmm. that you would that you would probably get in a loot crate box, because um, mm-hmm. you know you just never know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, actually, honestly, one of my there are like probably two consistent things from loot crate that I always love getting, and I love the fact that it's a mystery. Uh, it's the T-shirts and the uh, the figures. You know, and I have a whole, I have a whole table behind me in my room of, uh, of the different figures mm-hmm. that I've gotten. I wish, honestly, I wish there were more Funko Pop ones, but just because that's probably my favorite. Mm-hmm. This is also not sponsored by Funko Pop. Unfortunately, Funko Pops. <laughs> um, I have a ridiculous number of those. I I do too, but I wish I had more. Um. And you know, I have I have a lot of really fun ones. I have like I don't know like two or three uh Rick's Rick Sanchez's. <laughs> and uh I have I have one Morty, but that's not that wasn't from there. That was just a Funko Pop that I bought separately. I'm just at the point right now where we we bought shelves just for Funko Pops. Mm-hmm. They're like they're small shelves. Um, but we have four of them and each of them fits three Funko Pops and it's just like I think that maybe this is maybe unhealthy. Well, no. it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> no, fine. Just... Especially because, like, as someone who's very logical, I'm like, they're completely pointless. 
They are not pointless. You take like them. They are. They are. They, they just sit on a shelf. They do make great gifts, especially That's if you have true. one that you they're know, just adorable. Like, but like they're like, purely oh. aesthetic. I yes. know. There's plenty of stuff in any house that is purely aesthetic. I have like five. No. Okay. Sorry. That's an understatement. I have, uh, hold on. Give me a second to count all my posters and stuff. But when they're 10 or $15 a piece and I have 20 of them, when I'm sitting down and I'm like, I spent $200 on little figurines to sit about my room. Like I'm just, I'm conflicted about that because I do love them and I think they're adorable and I have a ton that represent a ton of different things that I like, but I'm still just kind of like, I would never sit down in one sitting and spend $200 on dolls. That's how they get you. You almost have to I know, exactly. Which franchises mean the most and mm -hmm. get, so, all right. like, I, only those pops. Cut you off, but uh, I have, like, okay, I have at least a dozen posters in my I have a lot of I have a lot of posters. But those are purely aesthetic, right? Yeah. And they, they do technically they take up do, space. So what's the But they do add more to a room. And they take up a lot of space. Yeah, so in so the space the where difference? I could put one poster, I could put twenty Funko Pops on different shelves. Yeah. Spend so, three hundred like four hundred percent, five hundred percent the amount of money. This would be a good idea for a poll. <laughs> um posters <laughs> versus Funko Pops. You know what? We we can do that. I can put it up on my uh, Facebook page. Um, yeah. So well, I like the media stuff we need to do for this. Yes, I, I would, like I would both. What, think, what the people think. Yeah, I like both, but I do, I do like posters a lot because I feel like you can get a little bit more artsy with them. Yes. Um, and there's a lot more variety in the subject matter. <laughs> it depends. Um, mm -hmm. It really well, does. Depend. So, like on my right, I have a very cool blue TARDIS poster um, and on my left I have my my Hufflepuff poster that's kind of like a watercolory oh, badger yeah Hufflepuff so boo I feel Hufflepuff. like <laughs> do what boo Hufflepuff we're not listening go, uh, on, go on go on Hannah but it's like they're they're a little bit more artsy than just having like a figurine mm -hmm. mm. but I still like yeah, the figurine. especially if you don't have a whole lot of space to put figurines okay i know this is different have, like, things on the wall um uh, i have a fight club poster um of course probably, should, probably shouldn't talk about it uh i have a <laughs> walking dead uh autograph picture from mm -hmm. uh the telltale game i have a winter soldier poster i have a red versus blue and wait is it a captain america the winter soldier poster post yes poster? yes uh, from, or is from, it uh so like a movie poster. Okay. Yes, it's a movie poster. Not gotcha. the Winter Soldier, the comic book character, but it's the film adaptation. Okay. Yes, yes. <laughs> but it's a very cool looking poster. And I have a Marvel poster and then a Red vs. Blue poster. Okay. I have, uh, well, I guess we're just naming all the posters we have. <laughs> oh, I only named two. I did not name all the posters I uh, have. Uh, most of mine actually are probably loot gaming because those yeah. those also were another thing I loved from Luke Gaming, which they didn't have in Luke Crate. Uh, so I have one for Marvel's Spider Man. I have one for Mass Effect. One for The Elder Scrolls Online. Uh, a Rick and Morty one. A Destiny Warlock poster. An Overwatch poster. A mini Captain Marvel movie poster and a mini Deadpool 2 post movie poster and a another like uh, Deadpool hmm. really cool Deadpool mini poster it's uh, I, I don't even know how to describe it it's really cool <laughs> Deadpool loves you too Hunter oh I also have a God of War thing <clears throat> yeah, I a, remember that one yeah and an Escape from New York thing. Hmm. So, Hannah, did you also have these same issues with figuring out what to get at MomoCon? Because I can imagine they had the same amount of, of you know, boosts. And... Yeah, I did. I definitely bought a Funko Pop while I was there. Of course. Um, and I think I... I don't think I bought any manga, but I maybe thought about it. But I found this... I can't think of the word. It's like holographic, maybe. It's one of those things where like you change the angle that you look at it and it's a different picture. Yes. Yes. Right, they know what I'm some, talking about? Yes, they have some really interesting ones. Uh, yeah. 
Dragon Ball some other fans were, that were in line to meet Sean had some ones for Dragon Ball Z or yeah. well, Dragon Ball, well, the, the whole series of Dragon Ball where you can see like, you know, Goku from Z, Goku from uh, GT, Goku from mm-hmm. uh, uh, Super. And yeah. Really cool good poster. Yeah, I basically walked around looking for that one thing that I was like, I have to have it. Yes. And I found it. It was one of those. And it has um, Toph, Katara, Aang, and Zuko from mm-hmm. Avatar The Last Airbender. And I was like, yes, it's so cool. I like, unfortunately, have so many posters and Funko Pops. I actually still haven't put it on my wall because I don't have space. Mm-hmm. But it's so cool. Honestly, you know, you say that I probably have there's probably at least like one or two posters for some reason that is feeling like a really weird word for me to say. I feel like I'm saying it wrong. I don't know. Uh, I have like one or two posters that I still haven't put up yet. Mm-hmm. I think one's a a D and D one. I have several, I think they're under my bed. Um, I have, yeah, definitely oh, and some like Doctor Who and Star Trek ones. It's nice. Good. nice. Yeah, uh, really cool. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Doctor Who at all, but they have like a, a Van were... Gogh TARDIS thing going on. Um, yeah. It's very cool. I love that poster, actually. Uh, I uh, For Christmas one year, I actually got my mom a, uh, what do you call it? It's like a blanket, but it's comforter. It's a, a throw, a throw pillow, or not a pillow, but a, a throw um, that had that artwork on it and i think it's really cool i think it was the one it wasn't the starry night one but it was uh it was the one with the ship blowing up okay or the tardis blowing up and i i really like that yeah i have the starry night one yeah i figured cool. <laughs> uh, that seems to be the more popular of the two from what i've noticed i don't know hmm uh, so, okay, now, remind me again, what is Momocon? Momocon is um, more about uh, manga and anime and just very Japanese. I went, I actually had never been to a con before, and I went with my 13 year old cousin. Um, it was just the two of us, so that was an adventure all in itself. And she, um, she like got to meet her favorite anime reviewing youtuber which was really cool and we played a lot of like imported japanese rhythm games which we both were awful at japanese um, rhythm games oh my gosh Naturally. are you like saying that because you're not familiar or uh yes i'm very unfamiliar <laughs> okay yeah the japanese take their rhythm games so seriously like they're uh, actually... crazy intense like if you've actually ever played uh ddr Oh, okay. Rhythm games. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, come um, on. Have you seen their just oh my gosh. game shows? They're ridiculous. As yeah, they? it's it's so beyond. Like, I have pretty good rhythm. I don't stand a chance. I'm always playing them on like the easiest difficulty and still failing. There's ones where you have like multiple buttons and and you have to spin things and hit things and there's it's it's a ton. Um, yeah. I think we played one game together and still failed. Um, where like I hit two of the buttons and she hit two of the buttons, they they're insane. Right, I was a little. They had uh, Beat Saber uh, available to play. Mm-hmm. I keep wanting to play. That's cool. Uh, I was tempted to play, but I also didn't want to. I never played before, and I didn't, like I didn't want to do it in a cr- in front of a crowd. So oh my gosh! But I will be attempting to try that because it does look like a lot of fun. That's I will do anything VR. VR anywhere because I flipping love VR. I think it's yeah. so cool. I want it, but I don't have money, and <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. and I probably don't really have enough space for it. If I'm, yeah, although I feel like a lot of the VR stuff is getting cheaper. It, well, I'm yeah, gonna wait until it's free. Like not into the the realm of really yeah. affordable, but if you save up for a little while, yeah, just yeah. forego rent for a few months, and then you should be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. or food. Just eat ramen; it'll be fine. Yeah, ramen just is don't like- eat. <laughs> just don't eat you're fine yeah yeah no, uh, but... yeah no i mean uh you know i was thinking of this earlier today actually uh with when you brought up momocon i was like you know i don't I, I feel like that name doesn't tell you at all what it is is it named it's not named after momo from avatar 
So no, 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 no. <laughs> I don't know where the name comes from. I mean, I feel like it's just a very sort of stereotypical, cutesy sort of name. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I can see that. Because I've definitely seen a good number. I feel like I've, I know a lot of characters who are named Momo, but I don't know where it actually comes from. Because mm-hmm. I, yeah, I was thinking of that. I'm like, well, Comic Con kind of tells you what it is, although it seems to have expanded more. It's been more into yeah. pop culture because at Comic Con this year we had uh, the, Ninja, the Ninja Turtles, Big Bird, uh, people get uh, anime stars from like uh, Todd Abercorn and Sean Schimmel at video game stars Master Chief uh, and oh. Batman were there, but also Jenny Weasley and yeah, yeah. Uh, David Yost from Power Rangers. Uh, so it was, it was, and it was still a variety, a variety of people from like pop culture, not a whole lot, but yeah, it wasn't gotcha. super focused on comic book heroes or people that have been in superhero, you know, movies. Yeah. TV. So I've got, uh, I got Google to the rescue over here. Uh, okay. Momocon. It's because Momo in Japanese means peach. And so it's like their con in the peach state of Georgia. Okay. Ah, okay. That makes sense. So it's like Georgia Jap- Japanese con, basically. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, and you know, when I was thinking about this earlier, I started thinking, well, Dragon Con doesn't really tell you what it's about either because that's yeah. not that's not like specifically dragons. That it's well, about. I mean, Dragon Con would imply that it's more fantasy. Yes, I would imagine Comic Con would apply that it's more maybe a little bit more sci-fi, um, but I feel like there's I personally I don't, think don't really know the difference. Yeah. Well, if you go to San Diego or New York, it's definitely more comic oriented. It, it yeah. seems it seems so because and that's where they've been. You get more of the you know all the ones from the superhero movies to show mm-hmm. up. Uh, they yeah. do more kind of explaining more of their you know. Yeah, and when I say sci-fi, I don't necessarily mean I don't necessarily mean like Star Trek, Star Wars kind of stuff. I just mean yeah. I I kind of put superheroes into the sci-fi category. Yeah, I can. Um, so I feel like it's I, more I kind of do too. Yeah, less so with dragons and and D and D and all that stuff. Yeah, but like there, you know, last time there was like uh, Peter Capaldi showed up. You know, he was to Dragon Con. Or? Yeah. Oh, okay. And uh, one of the other companions, I can never remember her name because she was my least favorite companion. But was it Donna? Yes, uh, I like her <laughs> as an actress. Least favorite? She's my favorite. No, she's terrible. Uh, but no, I like I, I like her as a job. I like her as an actress. I liked her in <laughs> Catherine though, Tate. Yeah, Catherine Tate. Even though her character, like everybody's character, uh, is awful, I liked her in The Office. I thought she did great in there. And I think she's just kind of funny. I don't mm-hmm. think she was good for Doctor Who. So mm-hmm. I don't really care about seeing her. Uh, but, you know, there was there was a lot of interesting stuff. There was um, one of my favorite panels that I had gone to was a Venture Brothers panel, which I don't mm-hmm. know if either of you watched that. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, dabbled, actually, Josh, you watch it. Dabbled as I was forced to by her. I was, you know, what oh, I yeah. I was, you know, brought on board by a roommate and kind of watched as yeah. they were watching. So I understand. I remember they watched it now. Yeah. And I got a, a hand-drawn picture by one of the artists and I was, I'm so happy about it, but I was so disappointed too because I didn't have, I was still at the con and I didn't have like a bag or anything that I could carry the picture around with. So I had to fold it up a few times oh, no. in my pocket. So it, you can Earth definitely see some creases mm-hmm. on it, but it's it's it's, in, it's on my wall in my room. It's a great drawing. Yes, yeah. one of the first rules of con, everyone, to bring a small a backpack or a knapsack because you will, yeah, will need it. Yeah, that they, is definitely they gave us them at Momocon, which was nice. That was nice. That was nice of them. That yeah, was nice. Okay. Um, also, my we're... sorry, you go. I was just going to say, um, Ashley, my sister-in-law, went to Momocon this year, and she got to meet um, Patrick Warburton. Oh, yeah. Yes. Which I um, was thanks. kind of confused as to why he was at Momocon. I'm so jealous because he did not go by Dragon Con where he should have been. 
he because really showed Adventure me. Brothers panel. We got a poster with our names on it because he signed it. It's great. Damn you. Yeah. Uh, anyways, not not jealous. I'm real. Yeah, but I think it's mostly because I guess he's he's done a lot of voice acting, and I think that's why he was there. Yeah. Um, but I don't I don't know if he did anything like specifically anime related. I don't know. Yeah. So maybe it's just the. It kind of seems like with Momocon, Dragon Con, and Atlanta Comic Con, maybe celebrities just kind of go to the one they can. Right, right. It kind of seems like, eh, that's when my schedule allows me to go to Atlanta for a weekend. So yeah. there we go. They really have to kind of play it by ear. Yeah. Uh, sometimes there's, can- there's cancellations because, oh, I have a project coming up that, are, that I've already I have a contract for, so I can't miss it, um, you know. And, you know, speaking of that, I don't know for sure, but... My assumption is probably the reason that he didn't show up to Dragon Con last year was I, I think maybe they were still filming uh, the last season of a series of unfortunate events for Netflix. Uh-huh. That's my that's my guess. They may have already been done with production by that point, uh, so I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, I had to do some uh, voice some recording uh, like voiceover uh, for for part of the show. Um, I'm not sure. I don't. I'm not. I have no idea how they do their recording for the whole show or the production. Mm-hmm. But you know, I could. Have, I could have been it. Yeah, could have yeah. been. Yeah. I won't hold it against him personally. Kind of no. sounds like you will, though. Uh, okay. Yeah, I will. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, you know, so I was also trying to think of uh, what some of the differences are, some of the major differences between these cons. Obviously. They're obviously they're rather different subject matters, although it sounds like probably more and more, more and more, it sounds like they're kind of starting to broaden and kind of Mm -hmm. cover some of the same bases. But uh, so I know that Dragon Con seems to be more, uh, it seems to be a bigger event for cosplayers. Yes. And that seems to be the bigger draw for them. I saw a lot of cosplayers at Momocon. Yeah. yeah, but was it as many as Dragon Con? Dragon no, Con. but it's a smaller event. True. Yeah. Dragon Con has the big parade, and it's also at a very yeah. peak tourist season for Atlanta. It so is. Have, Dragon Con definitely. You're at your bet. You're pull, all the all. Everyone's there, and they're doing all sorts of cosplays, and there's a lot more, a lot more things going on, a lot more uh, guests. So it's, I guess, more of a pull, more of a incentive to dress up and. Again, though, it's a bigger event, so it's like maybe percentage-wise, the numbers aren't really that different. But well, I don't know. It's hard to say. Yeah, it's been there. Again, I haven't been to any of the others, so it's hard to say. But yeah. you know, again, it is it is just a very busy weekend in Atlanta during that time because not only do you have Dragon Con going on, but at the same time, you also have uh, someone was tell me I think it's like a Black Pride Parade something and yeah. have the uh just the pride parade you know mm. the lgbt pride parade yeah i don't know how maybe i'm gonna participate in that i don't know probably not though i just I, need to go to dragon con i'm so disappointed in myself for never having been because it's year. um i can't i'm poor what it's, it's like, i'm poor <laughs> But it's like August 30th to September 3rd, I think. Um, yeah. And my birthday is September 2nd. And it's like always Dragon Con weekend that I've so never been. Owe it to yourself. I know, I do, but... Uh, okay, is Patrick uh, poor too? I mean, you're poor. Yes. Patrick yes. is fine. Collectively, we are poor. Yeah. Collectively, you have enough money for one of you to go. I don't know, those tickets are expensive. And especially now that it's only like a month and a half out. You yeah, I mean, plan. It was maybe I'll go 2020 and I'll it buy tickets for my birthday this year. It oh, wasn't as expensive. It wasn't as expensive as I thought it was going to be. I just bought tickets uh, yesterday, and they were like 140. Yeah, I so know. Not inexpensive, but it could. But it it will be worse if you wait. You have to understand. I'm trying to move out of my parents' basement so I can have a baby. I, I don't have a lot of extra like expense money right now. Mm. The struggles. No, I, I I did go uh, in 2016 to, to Dragon Con. The only time I've been uh, 2015, I went to the parade and I just kind of watched, and that was amazing. Everyone there is super creative and very 
de- where they're very dedicated to their, their costume. Mm-hmm. Um, but I went to, I was a little under the weather that whole weekend because I was meaning uh-huh. to go. Uh, I was able to see a lot of cosplay when I was like walking around, but I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't actually have, have my ticket. But I got a ticket for Sunday when I was feeling better. And I was able to go to a couple panels uh, and then see, um, I think the one, first one was, um, I want to say it was a Firefly panel. Could be. I think it was a Firefly panel. <laughs> uh, and then the second one was a uh, was a DC Comics, DC Universe, you know, panel. Really just talking about legis- Legislative Tomorrow after their first season. <clears throat> kind of wrapped. Hey, yeah. so, I'm sorry, did you say that- 2016? 2016. Was that when we were roommates? Um, <laughs> yes, we were roommates. Yes, we were. Okay, did we not coordinate? Because I went to Dragon Con. I kind of walked around Dragon Con at uh, that year. Wait, what? <laughs> like, I mean, I didn't. I, I didn't get a ticket or anything, but I I went to the you know one of the uh, hotels and I just kind of walked around. And, looked at some of the you know costumes and stuff okay but i don't recall you mentioning any of that yeah i i <laughs> yeah i just kind of went uh i had some my, my you know friends from my hometown had come up to visit uh we hung out like we had hung out that weekend I now i remember you went to uh walker stalker con yeah that did that happened that same year that was first also went to the walker stalker for the first yeah. time because i remember I remember you went to that because mm-hmm. you guys had like an extra pass or something. Something happened and I was able to go with you guys on like the last day, I think, to see yeah. the premiere of like the second episode of the Walking Dead season. Yeah, they let you use, uh, which we use our other friend's uh, pass. Uh, we didn't have an extra one, so let you use uh, someone who, the, our, the, our, the couple, our couple friends that didn't want to go. Yeah, so that was an extra one. You used someone else's. Yeah, it was extra because it wasn't being used at that. Okay. Anyway, it's not important. Semantics. Not important. Not important. Save it for the semantics dome. Anyway, we uh, yes. Uh, so I went that went to the, to Dragon Con, and I went to, met um, the guy who plays Vandal Savage in Legends, and uh, got to see you know met the guy who voices Grill Grodd and Flash. And maybe you did tell me this because that sounds familiar. Yes, and also at the end of it, which was the best part, I went to the robot uh, wrestling uh, tournament which was awesome. And yeah. it was something I definitely recommend seeing uh, when, if you go, especially if you, if you like, you know, wrestling and if you like robots. Actually, I, I do not remember you telling me about that, but I remember seeing that on a list of the events uh, when I went to Dragon Con last time, but I didn't actually end up going to it. And I, I was disappointed. I think I went to like a film, a filmmakers meeting and I was really disappointed because it was more for the, people who actually made film short films for the the festival there and i didn't make one because i didn't know it was a thing that was going on so i just kind of ended up sitting sitting around listening to other people feeling like an idiot but Next time. Next time. and i missed and i missed the robot wrestling yes which was very i'm fun. uh not into wrestling but i am into robots so you will like the robots they're not they don't do now they have the specific designs of like pushers and throwers and spinners, mm. something like that. I but feel like that really, sounds familiar. But it's still really entertaining. It's and so you have to kind of and you get to you have to get inside the you know the heads of mm-hmm. designers. Like yeah. oh, how how would you make a robot to the, you need to be able yeah. to push them what out I, um... or pick them up? Which they do pick picking seeing a robot pick up another robot and twirling, twirling it around. It feels like you're in <laughs> a giant uh, WrestleMania. Yeah, and one of my favorite hobbies is getting really into a sport for a day. Yes. <laughs> my my, I, I choose not to get into any sports for any amount of time. No, it's just like stuff like um, I I frequent Taco Mac, which is a sports sports bar, mm. um, and they sometimes play random sports on the TVs, and so uh, I've been once and got really into their uh, cornhole tournament. <laughs> Of course, that sounds. I watched so that and Four was like super into it, and like looking up all the stats of the players and stuff. Um, <laughs> and then one time I went with my family and we got really into sumo wrestling because that was playing on one of the TVs. That I could and, get into. Yeah, but just for a day. But like yeah. we went home and pulled up the same channel so we could see the rest of the the match. Um, so I could be, I could be really really excited about robot wrestling for a day. 
Yeah. Okay. Okay. While, while you're there for the for the con, yeah, you know, yeah. see, you've yeah. seen your I'll, I'll like scream and and shout and be like, destroy him! Like whatever everyone else is doing, I'm there. So. Yeah. yeah. Not like so. In terms of sports that we can get into occasionally, if we're if we're talking about that for a second. Uh, I don't know. If, can we talk about sports on this? Well, I, not real sports. Okay. 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 <laughs> I, might get, I might get in trouble for that. Yeah. Uh, I might get some hate for saying not but occasionally even this i don't get super into but occasionally i will get pretty into like the overwatch league ah oh esports yeah esports esports are fair game we can talk about esports on a nerd variety podcast all day long that's fine yeah yeah yeah. Uh, i mean i'm actually i'm actually a big fan of atlanta rain uh because i live in atlanta and I, it's an Overwatch. <laughs> so yeah, there. I'm actually part of their Discord too, although I've Ooh. never actually looked at it or said anything on there or read anything. But still, I'm part of it. There you go. That's what that's what counts. Yeah. 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 And yeah. I think they. I don't know if this already happened. I want to say it did, but they actually came to Atlanta a little bit ago. Yeah, I think it was a little bit ago, just recently, uh, and they did an Overwatch tournament uh where atlanta rain played locally yeah and i was like "Ooh, that would be cool if i could go to that but it probably costs money yeah Mm -hmm. i think esports are a good um alternative thing and i think they would be great uh i live in a smaller uh community um and we do have you know high school and rec and well Rec, excuse me, rec and like you know school grade school sports um a college that does some sports a small college does some sports um during the year mostly just soccer uh and some softball but i think esports would be a good way to really bridge the gap between you know cover the base cover cover other bases like oh we have this population of people who like to play video games and you know or uh mobile games like pokemon go let them kind of host and host it, have a, have a place and host, you know, an esports thing and have like a local tournament. Um, yeah. And you would find, you'll definitely find an audience for it. Oh yeah, definitely. And you know, I, I've wanted every once in a while, I've thought about it when I watch an Overwatch League thing, I think it, it would be kind of interesting if I got really into this, like other people get into actual, like, physical sports and you know like knew the lineup of teams and knew kind of their personalities and knew the character the players and everything and now i'm like that just sounds like a lot of work i don't want to do that (laughs) i just i'll just watch them fight each other and see and just enjoy the intensity that when it's down to like the last two guys and you know it's all (laughs) down to one headshot (laughs) Yeah, you've never watched anybody play Overwatch, have you? <laughs> I'm thinking more of a Halo. I have watched a little bit of the Halo Championships. Or maybe CSGO. Although that, I have no idea what I'm talking about when I say that because I've never really played Counter-Strike Go. Mm, yeah. Global Offensive. But, uh, uh, Hannah and Momocon, they did have, uh, I know they have a uh, Smash Bros. tournament. Okay. I don't, <laughs> I don't remember. I have a friend that it, it, he always talks about going. Uh, he's been going for the past couple of years, and he goes into the Smash Brothers uh, tournament. Because, so he'll have people that are actually good to play against. Mm-hmm. You know, he he kind of he kind of he kind of toys with the, with all of us in Eastman. Um, <laughs> just to, you know, and he says, "Oh, come on, guys, it's it's fun. You guys can do it. Just yeah, it's not that. It's not, yeah, I won't, I'm not going to beat y'all too hard. It's like, and he beats us. He's, yeah, and it's like you know." It's like you get so close. You feel like you get you get so close to beating him, and he just <laughs> flies, just floats off back into the platform, and just. <sighs> <it's>, <laughs> I'm pretty. Okay. I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay. But he goes to the tournament. And he has a he has a great time. He like he finds people that are he can compete against, and mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's really it's a lot of fun. I would I definitely watch a Super Smash tournament. That would be a lot of fun. I didn't. I didn't. I had pretty limited experiences when I went to Momocon because again, it was my first con. I went with my my cousin who was maybe even 12 at the time. Um, So we mostly just like wandered around and we played a lot of rhythm games very badly. Mm. So I didn't go to a lot of panels that I wanted to because we kind of had to divvy up 
uh, because we had different interests. Um, And I didn't want to make her sit through anything that she was going to be super bored in. Uh, Right. That's that's kind of thing when you go with a group of friends, you have to Mm -hmm. kind of be be understanding that you guys aren't going to, you know, they're going to be different panels, different times at the same times. And you have to kind of be like, okay, well, I want to see this, you know. Yeah. Animation, Can't really do that setting, while babysitting. Setting. True. Very yeah. true. <laughs> so. no, I just, when I went, you know, there was a few of us and I was just, I kind of wanted to spend some time with them, but I was like, okay, they're going over to this other panel. I don't care about it. I want to see this other one. So I right, see you. Nah, yeah. I'm going to go do my thing. But. Yeah. I think it'd be really fun to take my husband to um, to Momocon sometime because I'm trying to get him a little bit more into anime. Um, and we're watching Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood right now, which is so good. Yes, it, um, it's so good. But I feel like it'd be fun to just completely overwhelm him with anime for a day. <laughs> yeah, just throw him in the deep end. <laughs> yeah, we're going to go to all the panels and it's it'll be great. Yeah, make, I him, make, make, him meet, make him meet someone from your favorite that voices yes. your favorite anime, and just he'll be like, you know, hey, cool, great, oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, I met. Uh, I well, I didn't. I was my cousin. My, I had to put. I was. Uh, can I help my cousin out? He was uh, in his uh, wheelchair uh, going to meet um, Todd, and I just kind of let him meet Todd, and you know, I was like, well, uh, hey, nice to meet you. I'll be, I'll try to start watching your show, and it's kind of <laughs> what we'll, we'll wow. now. It was just, it, yeah, I just I didn't know what to say. It's like. <laughs> that's really funny. Awkward. That's, that's, awkward is the best kind of thing. I mean, that's basically what I did, because my, my cousin wanted to meet her favorite YouTuber who was mm-hmm. there at Momocon, yeah. um, and she even had a piece of fan art to give her, um, and so we kind of like, caught her as she was leaving a panel and I'm like go 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 and I pushed her and she ran over there and they took a really awful selfie together because because my cousin was super ner- nervous so she held her phone below their faces to get the picture and I'm like Abby oh why you just gotta, you just gotta, uh, you gotta kind of remind yourself slow down remind yourself that yeah. they're the person yeah you know, which is like a 12 year old girl meeting her favorite youtuber it was adorable oh, oh um, trust, trust, trust me I met uh meeting <laughs> Meeting Rob Paulson, who voices uh, Pinky and the Pinky, and uh, uh, one of the Animaniacs, I think Yakko, um, and uh, one of the Turtles. Um, meeting him was just like, I, this, <laughs> I, 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 was, I was glad to make him laugh. Um, meeting Kevin Conroy was mm. like, I don't know what to say, what to, say to you. Um, what can you say? Th- th- thank you for voicing one of my favorite, <laughs> voicing this role that's been part of my life for, that's, you know, I was born. <laughs> what you need to do, what you need to say to Kevin Connery is, hey, uh, go find Mark Hamill and see which one will win the fight. Uh, he, I did do, a, I did greet him as the Joker. Hello, Bats, how are you today? And he, he threw his head back and laughed. Oh, the Joker, no. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's got a lot of those, but you know. Yeah, that was probably a pity laugh. <laughs> Wow, rude. So, I mean, no, no. So, I mean, it was, that was funny. That would have been I, really funny. I, I, know, I, I know I'm not Hamill, but, you know. <laughs> no, no, I'm not about that. Just about the fact that he probably gets that a lot. So Yeah, he, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he had guys dressed as so many different kinds of Jokers and Batman that it was just, it was, he, he was probably just ready for, he's probably seen almost everything now. Yeah, you just have to promise us that if you ever meet uh obama that you have to do your impersonation of him oh yeah when you meet him because that's that's a really good impression i have to make sure i'm dressed as him too yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, like like ready to look like him and just kind of yeah, do yeah. a whole like mirror thing it's like pointing at myself pointing at him turning <laughs> up <See>, just <laughs> yes <laughs> make sure I trip someone with always think, always think it's funny. that would be amazing i want fi- i want photos Yes. Uh, yes. Photos? We talk yes, about. We need a video for that. <laughs> oh, you have the best of us. I'll get the video. Yeah. Get this. Okay. Uh, so, uh, also another thing that actually I just I thought of a few minutes ago. Um, so, from my experience with Dragon Con, I know they have uh, like a party each night. They have like a lot of different parties. P A R T Y. Those were those were like fun little things. You know, they had very uh, different like theme parties and it was just you know they had one that was like uh what was it last last party of alderaan or something last party on alderaan and there's like uh there's like a harry potter 
themed one where they, you know, like announced. I, I don't even know. There was so many stuff. It was hard for me mm-hmm. to get straight. There was a Wakanda party, uh, a Wapon- like a Wakanda comes out to the world party, um, hmm. and all sorts of stuff. So I, I was just wondering, like, is that something that they've done at like Momocon or they had a lot of like late night events I can't remember how late they went but they were all again I didn't go because they were all a little bit more adult oriented um and I promised to have my cousin back to her her mom by like six or whatever Um, yeah no six (laughs) six in the evening six in the evening Uh, just just making sure just making sure (laughs) um everyone's acceptable and I would love to go to one of them. And they definitely had a lot of, I think they had events going until past midnight, I think. Oh, yeah. Um, no doubt. And yeah. I would love to go, but maybe yeah. maybe next time. Yeah, they had some super late night events at Dragon Con, as I recall. Yes. I, I could be confusing this, but as I recall, they had some really late night events. And I was just like, uh, I, I'm not prepared for this. <laughs> I don't I'm, know. I'm such a night owl. I'd be fine. Well, yeah. see, the yeah. thing was, I was also staying at a friend's apartment in downtown Atlanta, and I didn't want to have to walk back in the middle of the That's night. That's fair. The walking is what gets you. It's like you want to, it's like, these things sound fun, but it's also later in the day. You've been walking mm-hmm. for six, five, five, five plus hours already. So how much more, how much more can you handle? Yeah. yeah. And like, it would have been different if I had had a hotel room or something in one sure. of the hotels. Like that would have been no problem with me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my yeah. Uh, friend, uh, he he was at Dragon Con that year, and he came to see us. He he, he had, I think he had come from a party to see us, and then he went left later to go to another to another party. Um, uh, I'm not sure about Walker Stalker. I can imagine they would have, they might have some kind of parties, especially since it's around Halloween. They there's something might, something might be happening, but I don't recall from a couple times that I've been. Uh, Atlanta Comic Con only had um, they had an adult version of their improv show, uh, and they also and they had Rocky Horror uh, from ten thirty to twelve, uh, but that was that was pretty much it. I'm pretty sure. I mean, if you knew somebody, they might have been throwing a party, but you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I just feel like I I've only ever been to Momocon, and it was it's a significantly smaller con than Dragon Con, and I was already just completely overwhelmed by the number of panels to go see and and all this stuff at events and arts and crafts things and I feel like if you're gonna go to a party maybe you just need to resign yourself to the fact that you need to like go sit down for four hours and maybe maybe get a drink and a burger and just chill before going out again because you can't go all day like that there's too much to do and Oh my gosh, I was overwhelmed. Especially if you're wearing, if you're doing cosplay already that day. That's that's uh, that's a lot. <laughs> oh my gosh, and there's some people who do like multiple different cosplay outfits. Oh yeah, I'm during the weekend. I'm definitely planning on doing multiple <sighs> cosplays during this one. But uh, I would love to. But I've heard people do like a different one for each day at least. Oh my goodness. And uh, I have, I I'm rather happy about mine. I I have planned to do a whole like spider verse thing Ooh. so be cool. yeah make them yeah make them themed because be cool. from, from what the some of the people at, at, at uh, Atlanta comic-con told me they these costumes took three months to prepare and you know I try I attempted to do a my own cosplay for Walker stalker back in 2017 but it was kind of complicated uh, even though I had planned for you know a couple months uh, like I think for or a couple months earlier but it was still just you know, you have to get, you really have to commit. <laughs> I'm working on a costume to wear to the Ren Fair, the Renaissance Festival, and it's taken me like two years to compile the pieces because of just like the time, energy, and finances that have to go into it. Because um, I want it to like really be good, and I have some really really awesome pieces, but it's like, whew, I. That's a- uh, Making cosplays are tough. I I started thinking about them like at the end of, or maybe even during like Dragon Con last year. And I I got stuff to start making them like at the beginning of this year. I still haven't done anything with them. So <laughs> I, but you know, in my defense, I've been going through some stuff anyways. So like I I ended up buying 
all my costumes mm-hmm. uh, especially since they're spider-man stuff i feel like yeah. it's better to just buy them uh, yeah. Yeah, especially while it's out um you know it's, it's a, mm-hmm. you know it's the spider this has been like spider-man's year <laughs> yeah, yeah. well and that's year, so the stuff is out there too yeah, yeah, and if you're going to do, like, a Spider-Man costume, that's something that if you want to make it by hand, you're going to have to, like, sew. Yeah. And that's a level of commitment I'm not ready for. Right. right? So I... with me trying to create a costume, it's mostly, it's a it's a pirate costume, and it's like, I got a hat, I got a skirt, I got a really kick-ass sword that I love. Yeah. So it's more like buying pieces, because it, it feels like kind of the middle ground between just buying something out of a plastic bag and yeah. sewing something myself. Yeah, I get that. I was kind of the same with uh, one of my cosplays that I I haven't actually I I done it for like Halloween the past few mm-hmm. years, but uh, you know I haven't I've been kind of adding stuff to it and changing it up. It's like an Assassin's Creed thing, and then I add it. I changed it to be like part Destiny, uh, you know, like the hunter from Destiny, mm-hmm. and uh, it's just it's been all over the place. <laughs> and then uh, I have some like Eva foam because I heard that was good for cosplays. That's something I still haven't done anything with. But, <laughs> but this so, year, I have my... Uh, the only one that... I actually just bought two yesterday. Uh, kind of on accident. But <laughs> I was going to get them anyway. And one of the one that I have is Miles Morales' suit from Into the Spider-Verse. Which mm. I really like it. Yeah. It's, it's really cool. And I finally they, saw that movie like three days ago. Yeah. And <laughs> I also... Uh, I also got uh, this one I hadn't actually really planned on too much, but before I bought it, uh, but I got the new costume from the uh, the game. So okay. the the one with the white spider mm-hmm. outline and everything. That, that one's cool. It is cool. And I, I'm really excited about it. And, uh, you know, because of the whole, recent thing with me and the whole non-binary thing which Mm -hmm. you know i'm still not 100 percent convinced of but whatever that's for me later another time whatever yeah Uh, (laughs) not whatever to like your issues but like it's it's not entirely relevant uh but (laughs) it is (laughs) never mind anyways uh the other one i got was a gwen stacy from there's a spider gwen costume okay which i really like that costume it is mm-hmm. a good costume. It is really cool. It's got, you know, like the hood and everything. It's the white and black. Yeah. And pink. And I just, I think it's really awesome. So I was like, I, oh, I have a good theme going. That's two characters, at least from the same movie. Mm-hmm. And even though the other one's not the same movie, it's still Spider-Man and it's one of his newer costumes. And uh, yeah, yeah, I think I, I'm really excited. Yeah. Well, and kind of tying in the the topic of, of, non-binary and and gender identity one of the cool things about cosplay is like no one cares yeah no one cares right so it's like do it regardless of who you are and especially i think i feel especially comfortable (laughs) uh, hopefully we'll feel especially comfortable doing it during uh pride (laughs) yeah yeah uh and uh one other thing i want to say about that was um just a little note a little thing about me uh, that I'm happy for is uh, I joined a Facebook group of uh, it was like LGBT Dragon Con goers. Cool. And uh, someone was saying that they're looking for panelists based uh, to talk about like you know I don't remember if it was non-binary stuff, but I think it was just like representation of uh, like LGBT representation in media in general. And I'm like, hey. I just did a podcast about this kind of thing. <laughs> I'll speak on your panel. Yeah, so they have the community uh, ar- uh, to to kind of converse with and meet at the cons because it's yeah. all about embracing diversity and embracing all different yeah. types of fandoms. Even though it's supposed to be, you know, even though it's like, oh, this is you know, anime con. This is yeah, this is geeky, not comic con. This is horror, mm-hmm. uh, supernatural con. But, you know, we can all enjoy what we like and be yeah. express ourselves. Well, and I think it helps that that kind of nerd culture started out and still kind of is to a certain extent this uh, the outcasts, right? And we're kind of used to being, like, made fun of and stuff. Not so much anymore, but definitely only, like, 15 years ago, if that, 
right? Yeah. Being a nerd was was not a good thing. Yes. And so I feel like it pairs really easily with this idea of just be you and and whatever. It's kind of like, yeah, society doesn't really get us, but that's okay. We're just going to do our thing. Yeah, we understand each other, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. it's all good. good stuff. And that's what I love about it. And that's what's great about cons. <laughs> yeah. Just- I'm like slightly surprised that they have parties because I do kind of, um, there is the stereotype of nerds being very introverted and I'm like, I don't know if I would enjoy going to one of those parties, but. I kind of thought that exact same thing. (laughs) I I think it was something slightly different, but I think it was when I was in high school, it was like a kind of a nerd thing basically. And they had like a party and I was just like, I think this is hilarious because this is all the people that wouldn't do anything at a dance. Yeah. Wait, everyone came out of their mom's basements? Like what? Yeah. Yes, we got one <laughs> now. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, uh, that's our hour. Uh, I think it's good to keep this at an hour length. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I, You know what? We should have talked about a sign-off. We, you know, at some point we'll get there. Before. But okay, yeah. So this was great. Uh, is, I was going to suggest uh, this is Nerd Variety geeking off. <laughs> Over and out. Nerding out. Uh, beam me up, Scotty. Nerding, or, nerding uh, out. Yeah. Right. We, we got this is options. Nerd Variety, and uh, we're here to tell you, go to some cons and <laughs> enjoy being a nerd. Yes. Yeah. Next time. Do it. <laughs> <laughs>